The Supreme Court is about to rule on a huge case which should change the face of politics in America by drastically undercutting one of the main sources of funding and support for the Democrats, public sector unions. At the heart of the case, known as Janus versus AFSCME, is the practice of those unions charging agency fees to workers who don't want to join the union but who benefit from deals that it bargains. Those fees are mandatory and only slightly lower than full union dues. So what does it all mean? Joining me now, Executive Director of the Empire Center for Public Policy, Tim Hofer. Tim is one of the big experts on this, so I'd love you just to explain for us um, the real significance of this, particularly how much money is potentially at stake for the public sector unions. Some of the numbers I've seen around this are really huge. Yeah, so we're talking about um, roughly five million government employees across the country who are going to be affected by this decision. Uh, in New York alone, which represents about one in five of those of those employees, uh, 1.2 million government employees are in the state of New York. Roughly 200,000 of them have already exercised their right to opt out of the union. Um, so on the day that Janice comes down, assuming that it goes for Mark, you're looking at roughly 110 million dollars taken out of union coffers on on day one. And then what's, what, what's the um, state of play around the rest of the country in terms of the state's different um, sort of policies on this issue? How does that work out? The, the, the state's policies are, um, you know, they're, they're definitely by state. Um, every state has their own individual. We're looking at, I mean, again, we're looking at numbers on this that are, that are significant. Um, five million across, across just over 20 states. Um, and you're talking about five million employees from a high of 1.3 in California to 1.2 in New York down to as low as maybe 80,000. So how long has this, this case been sort of going through the system and when do you think we can expect a ruling? What are you, what are you looking at? This case was heard um, in February, though it's a continuation of a case that was heard back in 2016, uh, Friedrichs versus California Teachers Association. The ruling is expected any day now. The Supreme Court will hand down decisions tomorrow. Uh, it could be then. It could be as late as the end of their session, which is roughly the 27th or 28th of this month. And so when people say um, this is going to have a big impact on the Democrats, let's just unpack that a bit because there's the money but there's also the, the organization, right, the, the, the campaigning and the support. And, and, and in many ways, the, the, the Demo it's such a core part of the Democratic's, De Democratic Party's operations, isn't it? That's, that's what's really at stake here. How are they reacting to this potentially fatal blow? Well, not fatal, but, you know, crippling blow. Well, I, so I, I guess I'd correct that just a touch and, and talk about the government unions as, as, a, as a movement in themselves. Um, certainly here in New York and in, country, in states across the country, the unions are a, are a political force that are, that are, that are reckoned to be dealt with. Um, they, they organize, they are involved in lobbying at state houses and the federal government. They are involved in political campaigns at every level of government. So, you know, every dollar that comes away from them is going to have an impact on their ability to organize, their ability to impact policy, and their ability to impact elections. Tim, thank you so much. That's a really great summary of, of all of that. We're going to watch uh, for the result eagerly, but really appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Jason, let's go to you on this. The, um, the, the role of the public sector unions, I think, is just so interesting um, in, this, in this country. And I want to sort of put it in the context of the populist movement and the, the kind of pro-worker agenda. It seems to me that in many ways private sector unions um, are, are actually, if anything, too weak in America. You've got, you, you've got lots of abuses against workers in the private sector. But the role of public sector workers, uh, unions, is incredibly negative, it seems to me, in terms of blocking reform and lobbying in the ways we've just heard. I mean, it's a really big deal. Oh, this is a very important Supreme Court ruling because really what they're able to do is take millions and millions of dollars, galvanize thousands upon thousands of people, and make no mistake about it, they're going to spend 100% of their time lobbying to elect Democrats. These are federal workers that many of them work 100% of their time on union activities. So they may have a federal... Well, is that really true? Oh, yeah. it's absolutely true. They, they will spend 100% the of their so their time. They'll take a federal ta taxpayer dollars. Right. They'll get benefits. They'll get health care. Right. But they spend 100% of their time working on union activities. And it doesn't count as campaign spending. Why, that's right. Is that right? Yep. Why is that? Because it's union. 
amazing. And we're funding it's it. The taxpayers are funding it. So It's one of the biggest uh, grifts of all time. I mean, th this is really corruption at the highest level. Talk about draining the swamp. Like, start with the unions there. They're literally actively campaigning, mm -hmm. working on behalf of Democratic candidates, their whole movement to be able to get out the vote. They're doing phone banks. They're there on Election Day. Literally, while they're on the federal dime and getting paid in health care, yeah. just to be able to put forward their own candidates. And they use the power of the unions to be able to also then boycott other people or create mess and hysteria and total pandemonium so that nobody can get any business done and they shut you down. So you got to starve the beast. And when they take in millions of dollars, what the Supreme Court's looking at is making sure if you're, let's say there's a union and you decide, hey, I don't want to be in that union. Mm -hmm. They're still going to take up to 78 percent of the dues out of your own check, even though you said, I don't want in on it. They take that money and they pour it into the, to the union, even if you didn't want to do it. Yeah, it's compulsory. I just want to make the point that there should not be any public sector union, something FDR believed and George Meany. The whole point of a union, and they're always pretending they're like steel workers and pipe Yes, they, no, they that's are. such an important point. Their boss. You, they call themselves labor. Be, yeah, they literally say <laughs> yeah. labor. Okay, but, but why do you normally have a union if you're a steel worker or, um, you know, pipe fitter? It's because you have you know, a jackbooted capitalist oppressor on the other side and his profit, he makes more profit the less money he pays you. Okay, on the other side of a public, of a government union is the guy who needs your vote and needs all that organizing that Jason's talking about. So th they're buying their yes. own bosses. There's no profit motive, it's government. It it's utterly, completely corrupt from the get-go. That's and there are now brilliant. More that's, you know that so well. I, honestly, yeah, I'm, yeah. I love it when people give you know, intellectual backup to my prejudices. So I always <laughs> have this sense that I kind of, I'm, I actually like uh, the, the, the steel, you know, the, the steel right. do need protection more and more, frankly, in our economy today. And they're getting is... smaller and weaker. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but they're getting say. robbed. You see that they have these compulsory dues. They take all their money. They're not doing anything to help them. You know, the working men and women that are actually in the unions, they are using them. Yes. Okay. And making them, it's like forced, you know, labor for them for their political candidates. And also they block, so the other corrupt. thing is the lobbying function that we heard about. That yes. they, they, yeah. they block really important reform like, like school reforms that would benefit children. Often the poorest children who are the biggest victims of school failure is the public sector unions that stop you that. You see in like an education. That's shameful. And what they'll do is they will couple themselves with somebody like say a Planned Parenthood. And what Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood will do is they'll take all these physical facilities all around the country and they'll say, hey, we do women's health, but on the part time, what they do is the unions will come in and they'll use those physical facilities to gather, organize, and get out the vote. And Republicans are left looking around like, where's, where's our, but it's all funded by the taxpayers. Right. That's what's, what's so outrageous. outrageous. Well, look, re really big deal. Great discussion. Thank you very much.